Welcome to the Department of Correction. I'd like to take a moment to share several videos which will help you better understand our operations, programs, and services. We hope that after viewing these videos, you will have a better understanding of our vision, mission, and strategic goals. I would like to thank you for your continued support and for inf more information, please visit our website. We're here now with Christy Laducer. Christy is the Director of Administrative Resolution for the Department of Correction. She handles a lot of the communications and grievances um, that generally happen with the Department of Correction. Um, so we're going to go over a little bit of that and how that works and, and how you communicate with your family and friends and you know um, how they can communicate with you and how they can file grievances and that sort of thing while they're incarcerated in the Massachusetts Department of Correction. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Chris. So in general, let's go over the, the probably the most important thing. If I have a family member or a friend that's incarcerated in the Department of Correction, how do I communicate with them? Inmates may utilize the telephone daily. Um, inmates who are in special management units or health service or the health service unit um, may have limited access. As well as those inmates who may be on disciplinary sanctions, they may not have general access to the telephones because of a sanction that they're currently serving. The facility does monitor, te monitor telephone calls. Um, they are recorded and the facility monitors them for security purposes. So inmates need to be aware of that as well as their family and friends who are calling the institution. Um, the other way that inmates can communicate is by mail. And inmates can send an unlimited amount of mail to whomever they want. However, if an inmate is indigent, they're allowed to send three free mailings per week at institutional expense. Um, mail, ca too, can be monitored by the institution if there's just cause or they have a concern for safety of the institution. So it's important that families know that when inmates are communicating with them or they're communicating back. The only mail generally that isn't monitored um, would be legal mail, um, and that would be mail from an attorney to the inmate. That mail would be opened in front of the inmate, however, to check for contraband before it's provided to the individual. So you talked a little bit about they can mail things at their own expense. How would they pay for um, phone calls? Phone calls, um, there's one of two ways. An inmate can make a direct um, collect call. However, each inmate has a telephone sheet which requires them to indicate what telephone numbers that they're going to utilize to include attorney numbers or any other numbers to their clergy, um, etc. Um, once those numbers are approved, anyone that the inmate calls can set up a prepaid calling account where money goes into that account and um, it's, it helps to pay for the calls and it, it allows more access without um, so many restrictions. So let's say I'm talking to my, my family member or friend and um, they tell me something that, that I'm concerned about, like they, they, they say that you know, they feel like they're at risk or they feel like they want to hurt themselves. How would I communicate that to the department so that would keep my, you know, my family members safe? It's very important that when family members or friends do get a phone call or receive mail that indicates um, that there's a serious issue to be concerned about, that they notify the facility right away. Um, that can be done through the superintendent's office during business hours or through the shift commander during non-business hours. But time is of the essence, so we want to make sure that when a serious um, issue arises that they bring it to the attention of staff right away. So is there any other mechanism in place where an inmate can directly report an urgent issue to staff or some you know, superintendent or somebody like that? Absolutely. At each institution, um, obviously, we're staffed with correction officers and correctional program officers, and they're visible within the institution. So the quickest way for an inmate to report there is their issue or serious issue is to alert staff at the facility right away. Um, if you know, that's, that is the quickest and best way to report it. That way they will get the attention that they need in regard to the issue that they're having. Uh, whether it be mental health services or, you know, um, if they're threatened by somebody, appropriate steps can be taken to make sure those, the institution intervenes in those issues before something does happen. Okay, so let's go back to a more general issue. Is there any time that staff members have um, access to command staff or somebody like that if I have more general issue like about you know quality of life or something like that but it's not really an emergency? Non-emergency issues can be reported in many different ways. Um, again, staff are very visible in the institution and each institution sets up a time period during the day called access to management hour. 
And that's where the institutional um, administration reports to, including the superintendent, deputy superintendents. Um, and the EMA actually has an opportunity to bring their issue forward at that time and have it addressed uh, by the staff members who are attending staff access hour, or at least have the issue relayed so it can be looked into. So let's say um, I go to the staff access hour and I talk to the deputy superintendent or superintendent, and I don't feel like my issue's been resolved. Is there any more formal process that I can go to or, or utilize that'll sort of address that concern? Absolutely, and that's the inmate grievance process. That's where that process steps in. Um, if an inmate has a complaint, basically they can file a grievance about anything related to their conditions of confinement within a correctional institution. Um, the formal process has to be done within 10 business days from the date of incident. Um, so the time period is pretty quick. Um, we try to get those issues resolved as quickly as we possibly can. There may be a need to do more investigation, which could result in an extension being filed. Um, however, this is the formal process, and an inmate should exhaust this if they're considering any legal action down the road, um, because it is required by the Prison Litigation Reform Act, which is important for inmates to know. Um, so again, it's about any, con any condition of confinement issue that an inmate has. It could be about mail. It could be about their property. It could be about um, religious issues. Um, but they do have access through this process. One of the things that's important to note are there are issues that are not grievable through the normal grievance process, and that is disciplinary matters, classification matters, because those processes have their own appeal mechanism. Also, sex offender um, identification is not grievable through the grievance process nor are medical treatment decisions or dental treatment decisions as well as mental health treatment decisions. The medical pr grievance process is separate and apart from the routine grievance process at the facility and the inmates would need to file a grievance through the medical staff contracted provider. So once, that, once the inmate has filed a grievance, the next step would be if they're not satisfied the, with the results to appeal the issue to the superintendent. They have 10 business days from the date of they receive their response to the grievance to file that appeal. Um, if at that level they're still not satisfied from the response they get from the superintendents, the department grievance manager in my, in my office may also elect to review the grievance and they can take any action or override a decision that's been made at the institution in order to rectify a potential issue. So, I mean, just to recap, they're, they're probably eight or nine different ways to communicate with staff and medical and mental health and pretty much everybody in the institution if, if there's a problem. Um, so let's say I feel like my, my brother or sister is not really getting the relief that they want. Is there somebody that I could call directly and speak with them? Yes, you can. Actually, you know, the person that you would call is if at the institution you're not satisfied with the response you've been given they can contact the Office of Administrative Resolution and we'll be sure to look into the concerns and have a discussion with the, with the institution to be able to best resolve the issue. Sometimes it doesn't mean that there is a resolution, but sometimes families don't fully understand the processes involved and it's our job to educate them into what our processes are so they're more familiar with why something may be occurring versus feeling ambiguous about it. Okay, well thank you for your time, Christy. You're welcome.